Seattle, a TV6 investigation. More Quad Cityans than ever before are being forced from their homes. Scott County is on pace to set another record for evictions this year. It is a troubling trend that's only gotten worse over the past decade. Rising poverty, fewer homes, and a system that some say is stacked against tenants have triggered an eviction crisis. TV6 investigates Matt Christensen takes us inside this issue in part two of our housing series, No Place to Call Home. What day? One day, yeah. The third. The third. Davenport resident Jeannie Souza was on the brink of an eviction. Facing a notice to vacate her apartment in a dispute with her landlord over her therapy dog, Jeannie was desperate and losing hope. What are they going to do? Pick me up and throw me in this tree? I can barely walk. <laughs> I thought about ending it, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> With just days to spare, Jeannie found new shelter at a senior living complex in Rock Island. She's one of the lucky ones. On a Tuesday afternoon in the Scott County Courthouse, dozens of people nervously await their fates. It's eviction court, and most are about to lose their homes. Davenport has the 44th highest eviction rate in the country, according to a database of public records. Scott County recorded 256 evictions in January, the highest monthly total ever. That's on pace to more than double the total evictions from last year, when 1,462 were recorded. Scott County is on pace for more than 3,000 evictions this year. Experts say escalating poverty is at the heart of the issue. Nick Smithberg is the executive director of Iowa Legal Aid, a nonprofit whose clients include those facing eviction. It becomes a dynamic where the poverty causes people to experience evictions, but then evictions also cause poverty. So it's a very dangerous cycle because once people do get evicted, their chances of you know, continuing with stable income or getting suitable housing go way down. As local poverty rates increase, so is the cost of rent. The median Quad Cities renter makes about $12 an hour, but they need to make 15 to avoid paying more than 30% of their income on rent for a median $800 apartment. All told, rent in the Quad Cities is up 23% in the past decade. I certainly think that there have been some, some examples that we've seen where uh, some larger out-of-state landlords come in, maybe with an, with an eye towards sort of maximizing profit on, on properties and, and driving up the rents. It's leaving thousands of Quad Cityans with impossible choices. You're seeing more people fall into housing instability. You're seeing more Americans, more Quad Cityans who can't afford a $500 you know, emergency bill. Um, it's a difference between paying the rent, fixing their car, getting groceries. The consequences are dire. Evictions increase homelessness and are tied to higher rates of disease, assaults, and deaths. And eviction rates in Davenport are only getting worse, at least double the rates in neighboring Moline and Rock Island. Why the discrepancy? It may have something to do with the court system, experts say. Well, it, it functions as what they call sort of like a cattle call, where they, a lot of people come in at a short period of time uh, um, and are called up to the magistrates. Uh, there's there's two daises where people are speaking, and so it, you know it can be a pretty busy uh, environment. Sometimes it's sort of hard to hear. They go through a pretty high volume of cases in a relatively short period of time. Scott's the only large county in Iowa to handle evictions this way, but the courts aren't the only problem. Housing advocates say laws need overhauled so tenants and landlords have more equal rights. Ashley Velez is the executive director for Humility Homes and Services, a nonprofit housing group. We've got to look at changing some of our eviction laws or changing how that goes, having, you know, some mediation before landlords go, maybe incentivizing a landlord. While Scott County's eviction system presents challenges, the county also has a history of inequity when it comes to certain neighborhoods. A look at the economic labeling that dates back to the 1930s, but is still evident today in my next report. In Scott County, Matt Christensen, TV6 investigates. And next week in part three, we will bring you a closer look at those housing policies and their devastating impacts here in the Quad Cities. And you can find more in-depth reporting in both part one and part two of this series posted right now on our news app and website.